application. Um, so uh, what I'm going to talk is about the uh, micro is uh, next to the mechanism, and, uh, and I have this type of here, the DPY, by the way. Um, why is the Mexico rich, and why should it be? Uh, and this is because, um, uh, it has been recently a lot of interest and uh, studies um, uh, from uh, scholars in, uh, about the recent performance of the Mexican economy. For example, in just in November of last year, uh, the Tim Heckman, the Nobel Prize winner at the University of Chicago, and some of his students wrote this paper uh, entitled Policies to Promote Growth and Economic Efficiency in Mexico. Um, uh, in this December, um, Gordon Hanson published this, this article, which is, but, which the title is the one I used for my talk as well, which is Why is Mexico Rich? Gordon Hanson is, as some of you might know, is um, a distinguished economist at the University of California in San Diego. Um, and in that same, this was published in the Journal of Economic Literature. Uh, and in that same issue, there was this other paper by um, another distinguished American economist, um, Tim Kehoe at the University of Minnesota, uh, the ent uh, entitled Why Have Economic Reforms in Mexico Not Generated Growth? Um, uh, also, there was uh, last year, there was uh, this other paper by people at the Central Bank in Mexico, Competitiveness and Growth of the Mexican Economy, which was a survey of these uh, 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 arguments and reasons to why is the Mexican economy is not growing? There was also this, 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 this other book was published uh, last year um, um, by the World Bank, entitled uh, uh, No Growth Without Equity, Inequality, Interest, and Competition in Mexico, edited by Santiago Levy, which is now the vice president at the Inter-American Development Bank, and Michael Walton, which is a professor at Harvard. Uh, and then uh, I, to, uh, myself, together with Fausto Hernandez Trillo, we published an article last year as well on a book entitled How Can Reforms deliver, Help Deliver Growth in Mexico? So the thing is, uh, just this, 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 this survey of papers and of books is but just to give you an idea how the, there is a lot of interest on, on the issue of growth in Mexico uh, in general. And the reason why is that, uh, and, and that's why uh, I was interested in studying this topic, is just because uh, the, the, I think this summarizes perfectly what has happened in Mexico in the past 30 years, in, in, in the past 30 years, which is when the problem is of economic growth started. So this, this, this graph shows um, 60 years of economic development in Mexico from 1950 to 2009. Uh, what you see here is um, like two periods, basically clearly differentiated periods. Uh, this is the first period that goes from 1950, which actually goes back to 1932, 1933, uh, to 1982. So like five decades of rapid growth, and this is income per capita in Mexico. So five decades of rapid income per capita growth in Mexico during all these uh, five decades or 50 years of uh, a rapid transition period in which Mexico, it was even called uh, the Mexican America in, in back in those years. Um, so uh, 50 years of rapid growth, and then at some point, sometime around 1981, 1982, uh, everything changed. As you can see here, the trend that was uh, upward sloping um, for the income per capita Sort of started to change uh, with ups and downs, and a period of crisis, high inflation, devaluation, uh, cri financial crisis, and so on. So um, this will happen in, in 1981, 1982, and we have had already 27 or more years in that situation. So almost three decades, basically, of that the, uh, that process, which is pretty much like a period of stagnation. And that's why all these papers have been written trying to understand what has happened to the Mexican economy in the past 30 years so that we, we have not been able to grow at the, at the pace that we used to, 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 to grow uh, in the past. So and this, this, this graph sh summarizes what I just said, which is the annual average growth rate in those uh, years. So these are, this is the growth in per capita income per decade, 19, the, the, the 1950s, the 1960s, the period that goes from 1970 to 1982, which is a 12-year period, which has uh, two, two, two administrations um, in Mexico. So as you can see, from 1950 to 1982, growth at, at a rate of 3% per year in per capita terms. Which, if you think that the Mexican population grew at those years at around 3% per year as well, it's a relatively high uh, growth in, in population, 
That means that GDP was growing at a rate of more or less 6%, which is not that bad. So it was a rapid growth in those years. But then the, the crisis came in 1992. This is the, the, the administration of President de la Madrid. This is um, a, a, the period of adjustment crisis. Uh, GDP actually contracted by 2% per year. And then we re recovered the growth process in 1988 when the economy more or less stabilized and started to grow a little bit. 1980 to 1994, we grew uh, less than 2% per year. This is Carlos Salinas, the Gortari administration. Here, between these two administrations, NAFTA came into effect. The President Cedillo um, had a, a growth of less than around 1.6% per year in per capita terms. And this is the last uh, the t t nine or, t or 10 years of the recent um, the pan, the rightist government uh, administration in Mexico, which in average, at least till 2009, was based pretty much zero in per capita terms. So you can see here, there was rapid growth, then contraction, and then recovery of growth, but that started to diminish and is now basically zero. That's, that, and that's why there is so much interest in terms of income per capita growth in Mexico. Why is that uh, Mexico is not growing at all? Now, this is, this is uh, performance uh, Mexico vis-a-vis -vis Mexico in the past. So Mexico has done very bad in recent years against Mexico as well uh, in the past. Now, let's see how it has done compared with other countries. If you compare that with other countries, for example, these are a selected group of countries uh, which at some point there was relatively similar to Mexico at some point in time, and so a few of them. And you see that from 1980, we're using here an index, which means that Wherever they were in 1980, we, we fixed that to 100, and then see what happened after that uh, for every country. So they start from different levels of income per capita. But let's make that like the benchmark and see what has happened in those years, in, in the past uh, 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 26 years or so. And, uh, and, uh, and here you see what happened. Mexico not just lagged behind all these countries in relative terms. So you see like a country like Korea, for example, uh, between 1980 and 2006, uh, move from 100 to more than 400, which means that income per capita multiplied by four times in, income in Korea during this period. Income per capita in a country like Ireland multiplied by three times. That's what it means that it went from 100 to 300. So it really grew very fast in the GDP per capita in these in this economies. In a country, in country like Portugal or, or Turkey, or, or Tur Tur uh, Turkey, uh, I'm sorry, it, it, it almost uh, doubled in this period of um, 26 years or so, whereas in Mexico, as you can see here, this is the stagnation that I was talking about, it's basically flat, which is, which is precisely the point that I was, I, was, I was mentioning before, the fact that there has been no growth in Mexico at all, uh, or very small growth, very mediocre growth in the past 26 years, and this is true not just when com we're comparing Mexico against Mexico in the past, but it's also when you compare Mexico against some other economies in, in recent years. So. Um, so and that's why it's the interest. So uh, these are those were my graphs. These are graphs from from, from Hanson's paper, which is the one I showed you before, uh, which show show precisely the same thing. Mexico has done as bad as many other Latin American countries, by the way. It's, it's not just a Mexican problem. It's 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 a, it's a problem in Mexico, but it's also a problem in all the Latin American economies. So within the group of Latin American economies, for example, the only country that has done really uh, well is is basically Chile in the, in the past uh, three decades, as you can see here. Uh, all the other countries like Brazil, Venezuela, and Argentina have done as badly as Mexico. Um, when we, when we compare Mexico against S S Southern Asian countries, uh, we see that, for example, against Malaysia, Indonesia, or Thailand, Mexico has done very poorly and, ha and has done as bad as the Philippines have done recently. So um, this is again using um, this is the, the benchmark and seeing what happened in the past uh, uh, 26 years or so. This is in per capita trend, this is income per capita. Uh, and uh, compared with, with Eastern and Central European countries, again, Mexico is lagging behind um, countries like uh, Bulgaria, Romania, uh, Hungary, and Turkey. Well, so that means that in general, Mexico is lagging behind all this, con this group of countries and is doing as poorly as almost Latin America. Now, so far, what these graphs have shown is that, there are, that Mexico is lagging behind has done, has done very poorly compared to what they have been doing in the past, and doing very poorly compared to other economies in, in the world. Now, but that's not uh, the, the worst. I mean, this is, if this were not enough, um, uh, 
when we think about what's behind economic growth in an economy, uh, economists, we used to think that the most important thing is labor productivity, or productivity in general. Um, so um, this graph shows um, uh, the, 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 the continuous line is GDP per capita. It's exactly the same I showed you before, um, which is this increase in, in from 1950 to 1991, and then uh, um, ups and downs after that. The dotted red line over here, this is real GDP per worker, which is a, me which is a measure of productivity in Mexico, it's labor, which is called labor productivity. Um, for a country to grow, uh, for any country, uh, productivity is, is like the, the most important force to sustain a, a, a growth process in any economy. So you see what happened to, to labor productivity in Mexico. It's interesting that follows a little bit of the same pattern than, than GDP. It grew very fast in the 1950s, 1960s, and 70s. It reached a peak at some point in around 1981 as well. And then it started to, to contract. But the worst thing, notice that GDP per capita, which is the continuous line, has already sur surpassed what we, where we were uh, in 1981. So we are slightly better off in terms of P GDP per capita than we were um, in 1981. But when you look at produ labor productivity, which is the, the red line, you see that even in 2006, we were even below the peak that we reached in 1981, 1982. So that means that um, productivity has not, not uh, even grown at all during this uh, 25, 26 year period. So we are in uh, uh, high levels of productivity which are below, below the, the, the ones that we used to have in the early 1980s. So that's problematic. Because that means that uh, one of the most important sources of growth, which is productivity, is not actually working. And that partially explains what has happened with GDP per capita in Mexico. So, um, and, and, this, and this is probably uh, the most, um, and to get a better idea of what is the problem in Mexico. In terms of productivity, this is a graph from Heckman's paper and his students. And, and in this paper, um, this is GDP per hour of work. So how much output is produced by hour of work in, in different economies? And again, uh, this is not a benchmark. This is it's an absolute level. This is actually what is being produced per hour of work in, the, in these four countries. Um, the, and these four countries are means that in 1970, Mexico produced pretty much the same the same output per, per hour of work. As, as Brazil, uh, I'm sorry, as Spain did, and as um, uh, Chile did. Uh, Brazil was below here, right over here. Uh, since 1972 here, uh, to 2009, which is when this data ends, you see the difference. Spain, for example, has actually taken off, and Spain has been producing much more than, 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 than Mexico, and much more than Chile. And Chile was doing relatively badly in the 1970s, which is when, when Pinochet was in power, when the when the, when the, when the coup d'etat took uh, place in 1973, it's Pinochet years and so on. And then at some point it started to take off again. And now it's well above Mexico's productivity. Uh, and Brazil, which has been doing uh, relatively badly in the, past, in, in the past three decades, has been doing slightly uh, better off in the past few years, and has a slight, uh, slowly approaching Mexico's productivity. I mean, it was, was well below Mexico in the 1970s, and now much closer to what it was in Mexico in 2009. It's still below, but it's getting very close. But the, the thing is, Mexico's productivity is stagnated, uh, uh, whereas in Chile it uh, grew up uh, relatively fast, uh, after, particularly after the, 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 the mid 1980s. And in, in a country like Spain, it actually took off uh, uh, much earlier, uh, around the 1970s, and now it's doing much, much uh, uh, better than Mexico. So that, that's the, the, that's the, the, the thing with Mexico. So, so Mexico did, is doing very badly against itself in the past, and Mexico is doing very badly when it's compared with other countries in, in, in the same period of time. So, and that, of course, has uh, some impacts on uh, levels of development in Mexico. So, for example, this is, these are the poverty rates in Mexico. The poverty rates in Mexico are uh, right now, um, the latest data we have is 2008, and um, we have, um, uh, different definitions of poverty in Mexico. This is uh, the, the red line, the, the green line over here is extreme poverty, and, and the red line over here is, is total poverty, including extreme and moderate poverty. Okay? So that means that 18% 80, of the population is extremely poor in Mexico, um, which is not that far from what it was um, like almost 20 years ago. And this is um, 
total population in poverty as a percentage of the total population, which is 47%, and which is, again, not that below uh, from what it used to be um, 20 years ago. So because Mexico has not been growing, it's very hard to fight against poverty. So poverty then is, 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 uh, is, uh, is, um, is, a, is a highly prevalent in the Mexican population, which means that almost that 47% of the population is being poor means that more than 50 million of Mexicans are poor. That's what it means. And 18% of the population in Mexico is poor means that 20 million live in extreme poverty in Mexico. And living in extreme poverty in Mexico means, what, what, what that means, what this, what this poverty line is supposed to measure, uh, that poverty line is supposed to measure um, uh, the level of income that the family needs to have in order to be able to buy a basket of goods with the minimum uh, uh, calories uh, to, to achieve certain levels of nutrition. So that means that these 20 million people over here uh, do not have, do not earn enough money as to buy that, even that minimum uh, basket of goods, which provide them the, with, with the minimum level of calories uh, 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 intake um, uh, that they should have uh, according to this standard that was defined in Mexico by a, a committee, a official committee. So, um, so that means that they are really poor. They, they are not even, that's why it's called a, a pobreza alimentaria or food poverty. Uh, so they, they are not even able to buy that. So, um, so this is the situation in Mexico. So low growth, uh, high, poverty, high poverty rates, uh, we have not been able to fight against poverty in the past few years, particularly because we have not been able to grow. I mean, the most effective uh, um, instrument to fight against poverty in general, and this is what you can see when you look at the data in China, for example, is that a lot of people in China is, is, is getting out of poverty because of the growth rate that the, the, the Chinese population is, is experiencing right, right now. And not the Chinese population, the Chinese economy is, 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 is having. So um, because that, that process of growth is actually pulling, out these, pe this, pulling these people out of poverty by, by, by the way of get, getting them jobs or higher salaries or so on, and therefore that's the way they people get out of poverty. So, uh, but in Mexico, because we, have, we haven't had this much growth in the past few years, we still have the same uh, level of support rates, or pretty much the same level of support rates that we had 20, 20 years ago, or almost 30 years ago in some days. So, um, what makes things such performance? I mean, what's, why is that? I mean, what has happened to the Mexican economy that we have this, 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 this uh, So if you see what they have, this, 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 this papers that I just told you about, uh, what they say, let me just make a brief summary of what they say. Um, I, I, and, and the reason why I do that is because, um, as I said, it has been studied a lot. So I'm not gonna add new explanations to this, uh, why is this happening? I'm just gonna survey what, they have, what others have said about that. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my opinion on those how important those factors are and which ones are the more relevant. For example, Gordon Hanson in this paper that, we, uh, that I told you about before, um, he claims that there are basically four arguments. One is um, that, that's the same why Mexico is not growing. One is poorly functioning credit markets. Uh, I'm going to just talk a little bit more in detail about some of this. Second is that, uh, uh, which, is, which, which he calls distortions in the supply of non traded inputs, which means basically. Uh, a monopolies in, in the provision of either public or private, like uh, electricity, which is a public uh, monopoly, uh, telecommunications, which are basically private uh, monopolies, uh, skill labor, which is which, which means that there is lack of provision of skill labor in the economy. We'll talk about that later. And and uh, he also uses this uh, claim by Santiago Levy, which is as, as I told you before, is the vice president of the Inter American Development Bank who claims that part of the problem in the Mexican economy is that there, is, there are a lot of incentives for people to go into informality.